You are Vincent Valdez, correct? Yes. You're married to Mrs. Valdez over here, correct? Yes. How long have you been married? About 11 and a half years. It'll be 12 years in January. Did you want this divorce and the separation? No. Did you make that plain to her? Yes. How so? <laughs> That's one of the reasons I think uh, Le Leah left that week. It's just because every day I was trying to talk to her. And uh, we are, me and Leah's history is very religious. Uh, we met at Bible college. She was in the mission field, beginning of our relationship. Um, I played for a worship leader. Uh, we were both in ministry at different times. <clears throat> I say that to say, um, after I found out about the affair, I asked her if, if she would be willing to give Jesus a chance in our marriage, because uh, I know that God can heal marriages. And, uh, and she said no. Um, and I did numerous things that week to try to get her to see that it's best for our family to stay together. Because Leah was a good mother. She is right when she says that she was a good mother. But her, her actions lately have been manic and, and completely upside down. Like, I don't even recognize the person that I see. So you're testifying you feel like there's some sort of transformation with her right now? Yes. I mean, it's whether it's mental, spiritual, or everything. I mean, like you can ask employees, people who know her, who have distanced themselves from her. Her, the way she talks, Leah, I think I can count on one hand how many times Leah cussed our entire marriage. And the person I see now is a completely different person. That's why I'm concerned about my children. That's why I'm concerned about them being there. How old are you? I am 34. How old is she? 35. What's your current address? Ridge how, East. I'm sorry, go ahead. Burns, Tennessee, 37029. And how long have you lived there? About two, a little over two years. All right. And is this a home that you always shared with Miss Valdez? Yes, we, we bought it together. Um, <laughs> and up until <coughs> August, we lived there together. Okay. And how many children do you have? We have three. And what are their ages? River is eight, Noble is six, and Sage is two. Um, are they able to get on the internet, do you know, the eight-year-old? Um, they can get on the internet. We don't really allow that. My, I'm assuming you're referencing this photo shoot. My main concern is not them right now, but there's been plenty of cases where high school peers bully other kids by showing them, hey, look what I saw about your mom. Like, this is your mom. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to see photos of my mom like that. I mean, that's at the very least, that's therapy. I mean, there's been kids that have that have killed themselves over stuff like that. Do you, um, this home that's there now, you, the two of you own that home, correct? Yes. This business, Giggles and Glam, how was that set up? It's 50-50. We're both 50-50 owners of it. Is it an incorporation? It's a, <laughs> we started a holdings company. Okay. Uh, and and then what's we, the name of the holdings? Valdez company? Holdings. And it was a 50-50 in the holdings company? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else in the holdings company? No, just the, uh, just the Giggles and Glam. All right. So being a 50% owner of the business of Giggles and Glam, are there concerns that you have about uh, the the current management Absolutely. of your Mrs. Valdez? Here? Absolutely. Tell the court uh, what, what your concern is. We've about. lost almost half of our staff. I found this out afterwards because they started reaching out to me. Um, she's recommending business to a competitor, her boyfriend. Uh, not only that, but her, her current uh, behavior in using our credit business credit card to better her, her boyfriend's business, now I know that it's her business as well, could put our business in jeopardy. And when I took that money, I told her that, and I let her know that. I, I can go into that if you want, but when I took that money, I sent her a text, you have a screenshot of it, and it said, I'm taking $5,000. I, and I said, if this affects our, our payroll for any of our employees, I'd be more than happy to help with that, with the exception of your boyfriend. If uh, I'd be more than happy with happy to help with the business credit card payments, with the exception of these personal charges I see you're putting on there. All I ask for is profit and loss statements and records to back it, and I'd be more than happy to help. But that's when she started threatening me and sending me, you know, voice memos and stuff like that. Okay. And you hear me.
I do want to play for you a voice recording and ask you if you recognize that recording. How the fuck would the business go under when I am running it the same as I always have been? You obtuse motherfucker. Do you understand me? If you want to start a fucking war with me, start a war with me, Vince. I can contact Donna today. I can get a restraining order against you today. You will never see the kids again. I will tell them how mentally and emotionally abusive you've been, how I feared for my life when I was living in the house with you, and that's why I got a rental so soon. You will never see the kids again. I will take alimony from you. I will take $900 a month in child support away from you. I will also take your retirement account in order to support myself. So if you want to run this shit, run it. If you want to start a war, start it. Because I swear to fucking God, Vince, I have been very patient with you. I have been very kind with you. But if you are going to leverage the business that I fucking built and that I know how to run and you know two shits about running it, do it, Vince. I'm giving you an hour to redeposit that money. And if you do not fucking redeposit that money, I'm calling into the cops. I'm putting a restraining order on you and I'm calling Donna and telling her to redraft the MDA where I get 100% custody of the kids. And I swear to you, Vince, if there is a restraining order on file against you where I have felt unsafe for my life, and threatened by you, which I do, you will never see the fucking kids again. You can move to Texas all you want at that point because you will never get them again. Do you understand me? I will move heaven and earth to take you down in this divorce. If this is the shit you decide to play, you have one hour to deposit that money or I swear to fucking God, Vince, I'm calling the cops and telling them how unsafe I feel around you and how mentally and emotionally abusive you've been and how you pushed me up against the wall in the bathroom my last day in that house and I had to tell you to get off me three times. Do you want to be arrested in front of your kids, Vince? Because that's that I can make that happen. Watch me. And who was that on that recording? That was Leah, my wife. Okay. And When did she tell you she was having an affair? I found out, and she, she didn't tell me at first. Uh, she gave me papers on, she gave me the divorce papers on a Sunday. I found out on a Tuesday from my brother. Um, and I, when I asked her, she did tell me she was, was having an affair. <coughs> um, and then by that Saturday, she had moved out. You know, she's saying you gave her like an hour to get out and yeah, all that, that kind of stuff. Can you explain to the court your side of that story? Yeah, our, our account of that is a lot different than um, the week I got back. Well, I should say I my best friend from Bible school had just taken his life. So I went to down to Dallas to for the funeral for that. The week I got back, I noticed that Leah was kind of cold to me and we were getting into, you know, small tiffs and but she wasn't talking to me that Friday she had told me she wasn't in love with me anymore <clears throat> and I was completely blindsided Leah's always had a very high strong value for marriage and family uh, and I also didn't know she was having an affair but I I said well if I was like well I want to fight for our marriage you know we we have a lot to fight for do you want to fight for our marriage and she said I don't know <clears throat> at the time I had a lot of trust in my mother-in-law um, so I said, I think, uh, I think it's best then if you, for you to go to, to uh, your mom's house until you figure out if you want to fight for our marriage. You, don't, if you, sh you will go there. She will ask you, is he abusing you? Is he cheating on you? And the answers are no. And she'll tell you to come back, and, we'll, and we will work this out. And I said, I'm going to go get dinner. I think it would be best for you to go to your mom's house when I get back. I did not want her to leave permanently. I wanted to uh, – <laughs> I was trying to – I did not know about the affair. I was trying to just wake her up because it wasn't. This doesn't seem like the person I married. Um, but she did come back Sunday, and then she stayed again until that Saturday, and that's when she left. And that was against my wishes. I didn't want her to leave. Did you threaten her or do anything physical to her during no. that time frame? That, What's she talking about? There? Not that. Not <laughs> our accounts again are different on that 
what happened when it comes to that bathroom thing. Leah had been coming for a week and just cook. She would cook and leave. And then on a Friday, she came and cooked and stayed and ate with us. And at the time, I still wanted reconciliation on our marriage, even though she was having an affair. Um, I, we were joking with each other. She was laughing. We went to the bathroom. She was putting something away. <coughs> and I was making her laugh. And I made a move to give her hug, a kiss, whatever she would let me do. And she put her hand up and said, no. Our daughter was not standing right behind us. She was not looking at us. She was in the next room on an iPad, but she was not behind us. And when she said no, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I don't want to push you away. And I said, and I said, are we okay? I actually asked her, I think twice. I was like, are we okay? And she's like, yeah, we're okay. 20 minutes go by. I'm playing with the kids. And she goes out and gets on the phone. I assumed it was her boyfriend. And now I know it is. As soon as she came in, completely different person, yelling at me, saying she's never coming back. And, you know, that that's my account of that story. And at that point, she left? Yes. And, and I, now, instead of her mother's, where do we know she went? Uh, well, she was living. <laughs> she was still sleeping at her new house. Um, but I have never been physical with Leah in any way. I've never been violent towards her. Or, or sexually forceful towards her at any point. Uh, you know, again, our story is not this today. Me and Leah waited till marriage to have sex. Like we, we, our lives is not this. And the person that is here today is not the person that I've known for the last 15 years. Is that a concern for her and her children right now? Yes. I mean, the fact that she's letting a guy who just said he's willing to take more mushrooms around our children is extremely concerning. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I've never smoked weed. I'll take a drug test right now if you want me to. I, have, I do not want my kids around that man. I don't. And, I, and as long as Leah is going to live this lifestyle, I am going to fight for as much custody of those kids as I can. Where's that ten thousand dollars at? I mean, you said you gave five back. Where's the other five? It's back. It's actually there. It got there this morning. Based on the restraining order, we sent that five thousand back. Correct? Yes. And what was your position on this whole ten thousand dollars to begin? Well, with? I actually meant to take five thousand. I t I initiated <coughs> a, a, a withdrawal from Venmo, and it didn't work. And then so I used my bank, and they both went through. I sent a text to Leah. I have the screenshots for that saying, hey, I accidentally took five, 10000 I'm sending 5000 back. The next day, she still filed for 10000 saying that I took 10000 but I, I did return 5000 The only reason I took that money is to establish that this business is 50-50. And it, it, whatever, whatever she wants to say about running the business, that's fine, but that's because I trusted her. Just like she trusted me to do my job, I trusted her. We're 50-50 owners of it, and now I don't trust her, especially with her throwing money at her boyfriend and then also, you know, <laughs> building another business that's a competitor to the business that we own. We're one year into a 10 year loan. The, the loan payments are like crazy high because of interest rates. If that business goes under, I cannot afford it. I do not want that business to go under. I know that she and her boyfriend have testified, Leah and her boyfriend have testified that I'm trying to take the business down, but how would that benefit me? I would go bankrupt. What are your concerns with uh, Mr. Wild and Walden uh, at the business? Well, he's already run off three employees. Uh, so that's a concern right there. Three um, employees? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, it's just not professional. Leah is completely blinded by this man. Um, we, ha we do have a status quo for at, the, at the salon that the girls have to keep up with a certain a type of appearance. We are, we are talking about a little kid's salon where they do princess makeovers and, you know, they do birthday parties in the back and stuff like that. The reason I didn't come around the business that much is because I'm not the face of little kid's salon. Especially this man that she's with comes in with Crocs, a tank top that you can, sh you can see his nipples through in their vape machine. I don't think that's good for business, especially at a kid's salon. Leah is completely blinded by this man. He's completely taken advantage of her. Are you asking the court to reconsider, you know, these business funds? You know, she's getting 5000 a day and have it under some sort of security for you? Well, right now, Leah has closed down or she's moved all of our business funds to accounts with just her name on it, which I haven't even approached because the kids have been my number one priority, but 
legally she can't keep me from the profits of our business. We're both 50 50 owners of it. But right now I just have kind of let it slide. <laughs> but to answer your question, I guess, sorry, what are, you, what are you asking? Well, my question is, how do you, are you concerned about her new lifestyle and her management with this business? Yeah, absolutely. And how so? Well, she's careless. I mean, look at, she's given me like, you know, crazy amounts of like stuff to use in court because she's so careless. She's being careless with me. She's been careless with the kids. She has proved over the last month and a half that the kids' safety, health, and happiness is not her top priority. It might be a priority, but it is not her top priority. So the kids, uh, you've heard me talk about and ask her during that time frame of 33 days, yeah. you know, what's your testimony as to how long you had the how how many nights you had the children? I've counted. Uh, every time they come to my house, I have a note in my phone and I, I put down the dates. So what? The, how you got to that number is I. That's what I gave you. I gave you the dates that I, they were with me. Last Saturday, or this past weekend, she asked me, she's usually supposed to have them on Saturdays. Last, this past weekend, she asked me to take them because she was going on a trip with a boyfriend. The, Saturday before that, she asked me to take them. She's also asked me to take them this coming up Saturday as well. And she asked me to take them tomorrow, which is supposed to be her day, because she was going on some kind of trip, but I guess that got canceled. Every time she asks me, I always say yes, because I don't want them over there. And I have never asked her to take our kids, you know, when, when I'm supposed to be having them. Can you give the court a ballpark figure how many days, you know, you well, actually 20, have had them out of those 33 days? 26 is what, what we came up with with my notes. So 26 of the 33 days they were with you. Yes. Can you care for the children? <clears throat> yes, and I have been. How do you care for them? Um, I'll walk you through the day. I wake up. Sage, our two-year-old, usually wakes up first. <sighs> if it's really early, I'll... I'll I'll kind of lay with him for a little bit, like on the couch and let him sleep a little longer, get the kids up at around 6.30, uh, make their lunch for school, make their breakfast. Um, we drive to school, we pray, I pray overnight. Now, where is the school? The school, school is in Kingston Springs. And who did that? Leah did. And when did I, she do that? <laughs> it was like the week that she moved out. I'm, I've been homeschooled my entire life. I don't know anything about, you know, the legalities of school. Um, and she told me she was signing them up for school and I didn't, I didn't know like what my rights were and stuff like that. I just knew she wasn't homeschooling anymore. So I was like, okay, I guess they're going to be in school now. I did think it was too, too much too soon. I mean, they've been homeschooled their whole lives and they are having problems at school. Um, and I can get into that, but, but, uh, I drive them to school, I usually pray on the way to school, I drop them off. And then I have Sage or two year old during the day, you know, he's two. So it's just a lot of, playing and changing diapers and throwing fits. And you're uh, capable of handling all that? Yeah. And when we first got married, I was actually a stay-at-home dad with her oldest because um, Leah was like the career person. Um, so I've, I've, I'm one of five kids. I was homeschooled, and my younger siblings are quite younger than me, so I, I've been around kids a lot. Um, but obviously, I don't wish to to be a single dad, but I do think it's right now, it's the best thing for our children. That doorbell video, you know, she testified about some things that maybe you were saying or whatnot. Can yeah. you tell the court about uh, <laughs> well, your side of that story? Yeah, Leah said that I kind of just, I think the way she said it is I just went in there and just said what I wanted to say. That's not true. We sat down before we talked to the kids. I talked to two different counselors. How do you talk to kids about divorce? And they both told me the same thing. You need to be honest with them. I'm going to object, Your Honor, hearsay. Well, its objection is to hearsay, Mr. Holly. I, I think it's kind of non-hearsay. It's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted. I believe mean, his stuff is showing what he's done. I don't believe it is being offered to prove the truth of the matter. It's more of showing why he took certain action or why he takes certain attitudes. Overall. The counselors told me to be honest with the kids, to say it in a way that they would understand it, to say, mommy and daddy are having issues. When mommies and daddies have issues, we have to take turns with kids because kids understand taking turns. And me and mommy both love you. We're gonna be okay as a family, um, but right now this is what we have to do. And I ran it by Leah before we did it because she wanted to lie to them and, and not tell them the truth. And I said, this is what the counselors say, and she agreed to it. And then when we did do it, our oldest did, you know, have 
a huge episode. He went up to his stairs, locked himself in his room and said, I don't want this. And he told me, Daddy, I'd rather be homeless than us, our family be torn apart. And then you saw him crying in the, in the driveway. Um, but I did not do anything that was, you know, just off the top of my head. I told Leah before we had that conversation, that was the, one of the last times I said, I said, Leah, is there any pathway towards reconciliation? Because I would rather cut my foot off right now than have this conversation with our kids. I was not trying to hurt them. I've, this entire time, I've been trying to protect our children from the trauma that is inevitable. Where do you work? I work for a running shoe company called Ultra. It's owned by VF, Vanity Fair. They own like the North Face, Smart Wool, Jansport. Um, What's your job title? I'm a sales rep. I'm in charge of Tennessee, Kentucky, and like half of Mississippi. What would you say your monthly income is? Um, on the calculations we did, uh, the form that you made me fill out, I think the gross was like $7,500 a month, but net was like $5,500 a month. After all expenses and all the uh, the med uh, medical expenses and all the deductions, I, I, like my take home at the end of the month is like $300 some dollars like, that actually is not accounted for. That's including the mortgage that I've been paying by myself now. Are you capable of caring for the children if the judge allows you to be the primary parent? You ask him for that. Are you capable of caring for the children under your schedule? Yes. I, uh, I do want to make one point as well, going back from earlier. I have not, besides that money I took out a few weeks ago, that was targeted. It wasn't just me at it doing something out of nowhere. I have not seen profits from our business that Leah is living off of since June profits. So July, August, and then now, Leah has seen 100% of those profits of the business that we both own. You feel like that's going to pay for motorcycles? Well, it's definitely not hurting. Uh, I mean, she seems to be taking out a lot of debt, which again proves carelessness. I, don't, I think she just thinks that we're going to get divorced in 30 days and she's going to get a bunch of money so she can pay all this stuff off. But, you know, I think giving almost $4,000 to a man and also planning your whole life I'm around a man you've known for two months with the history that he has is very careless. Okay, have you learned now that when your kids are there, he's spending the night? Did you know that? No. Well, I figured because he posts photos of her house and it's at night and it's when the kids are there. So I, I guess, yeah, the answer is yes, I knew. Wasn't happy about it. What concerns does that cause you? Well, if it tells you anything, me and Leah, up until, you know, up, well, I'm still this way, but we have not been sleepover parents. We don't let our kids go to other kids' house. We, have, we are very, very, very protective of our children. Um, you know, earlier, the, you know, even this year, you know, we, we, as you do when you're talking about, when you're talking to your spouse, you know, Leah would say things like, you know, if something ever happened to you, I don't think I would get remarried while the, while the kids are in the house because I wouldn't trust any other man around our kids. And now, she's choosing this man to potentially trust around our kids. Um, and again, that just, to me, it shows a complete change in you know, moral character. The only things I know about him is what I've learned today. He has a history of, you know, not, not a great history. Uh, he's, he is okay with smoking in the car that my kids drive in. And he's, his moral compass is broken because he's sleeping with, knowingly sleeping with a married woman. And to me, as a father, that's enough for me to say, I don't want my kids around you. I'll show you a video and ask you if you recognize this. It's a video with your wife. <coughs> Wasting all your I'm to object as to relevance. I don't see what the point is that we're trying to make here. We've already talked about the videos. 
we know that she took them. They don't have anything related to the kids or the business. Is the relevance, Mr. Holly? The relevance is the kids, as he testified to, old enough to get on the internet. They're old enough to see this. Other kids are definitely old enough to get on the internet and old enough to see this. This was, and he will testify and connect this up, that this was taken off of the internet. This is where people can go and see that are proposing to do business with Giggles and Glam, the manager of Giggles and Glam, with this type of activity going on. And it's not conducive for that type of business. Um, and the funds that she spent on this, she testified she spent approximately $2,800, uh, but yet when we start to add some of this math up like we're gonna do, none of that adds up unless you take the profits of Giggles and Glam, which is half his, to do this type of activity. I wanna overrule the objection because under 36.6.106, as far as the determining the um, <clears throat> primary residential parent status, which is what I'm having to decide today, Numbers eight of those factors that are set forth is the moral, physical, mental, and emotional fitness of each parent as it relates to their ability to parent the child. I'm not saying that I concur with what Mr. Ali is arguing as far as this goes, uh, but he has every right to present the evidence that he thinks is, a, is relevant. And under that statutory guideline, it would be relevant at least on that factor. Again, not stating that I agree that that is a significant or compelling, but I am allowing him to present his evidence. Yes, sir. Over the objection, Mr. Holly. Yes, sir. Can I state that Leah said that was on TikTok. It's on Instagram and Facebook as well. It's not private. I didn't know she was gonna do that ahead of time because I have access to her, her email and she knows that. I told her about it. Um, I asked well, that's her- That's a joint email, correct? Well, yes. I mean, Leah, Leah's, the Valley Cleaning Service uh, and Valdez Holdings are both, Valdez Holdings especially, but both set up underneath my Apple ID, my Apple ID you saving passwords to my Apple ID. Also, uh, my personal email is a backup for the Valley Cleaning Service. I only know that because when she changes her email, I can see it, and they ask me, is it okay that this email has been changed? So they are connected. But when this photo shoot happened, I asked her, could you please keep this private? I know you're gonna do it, and I know you're probably gonna hand it to your boyfriend, which I'm not happy about, but can you keep, keep, please keep this private for our the safety of our children? Don't let the, don't let the studio post those publicly because I don't want our kids seeing this in the future. And obviously she did not listen to me. You saw that post that I introduced earlier where Mr. Wild, Wilder had, had said, uh, you know, uh, get the knives out, time for war. Yeah. You know, how did, did you take that as a threat? Well, definitely didn't make me feel good, but yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know him. Um, and what I do know of him, obviously, when something like that is posted, it doesn't usually make you feel good, uh, especially when with Leah's erratic behavior lately. Um, when she came to the house with the cops, um, she told me she was coming to the house, and I asked her, would you please come t tomorrow morning because our kids are here, and I don't want this, them to experience this. And she didn't listen to me, which to me, again, proves that health, safety, and happiness of our children is not her top priority. And when she came, the officers, I forgot what's called a, a civil something, is you, they told me it's usually used for the spouse to come and get clothing, articles, things that are necessities. Um, and when Leah came, all she was looking for was guns. She wanted my guns in the house. And she left empty handed. But because when she tried to pick them up, the officers were like, you know, no. So you shouldn't. Well, what did she ask for specifically when she was in the house? She came in the house. First thing she went for is a, a, I have a, a vault next to my bed with a little key, uh, little number thing so the kids can't get into it. Um, she tried opening it. 
um, but I had changed the combination because I assumed that she was going to do this, um, which I th think is crazy because like first thing about I, I am around police a lot just because of uh, hobbies and stuff like that. But first thing around, one rule about uh, number one rule around police is don't grab a loaded weapon and brandish it in front of police. But luckily, she couldn't get into it, so she just picked up the whole vault and started to walk out. And I said, you can't take that. It's registered to me. And the officers were like, yeah, no. And then she was like, OK, well, where's your AR-15? And so she went to go look for my AR-15. But And she was only looking for guns when she came to the house, which is extremely concerning for me. There's multiple reasons why you would do that, but none of them are good. I mean, did she want any of the kid stuff? She want any of her clothes? No, you saw in the video, Noble went up to her to hug her. Leah, it's like Leah couldn't even see Noble. She walked right past her. That's our, sorry, Noble, our daughter, our six-year-old. What have you witnessed as far as the separation goes with the children, the younger ones like that? Have it been hard on them? And if so, how? Yeah, it's in, in different ways. The The most visible is our oldest, our eight-year-old. Um, Every week he asks me, like, why me and mommy can't be together. Um, and you got to think, you got to know, like, their whole lives, they've been homeschooled. You know, if they get sick or, like, <laughs> they're having a rough day, they just relax you know, with, with mommy. But they've been majority with me. And when, you know, <laughs> our daughter is having a hard time in school. She, well, our, the, we had a parent-teacher conference last week, and they told us that Noble's been crying a lot at school. Um, she's just not used to it. And it's so much change. I have to think it's extremely exhausting to go from being homeschooled to now you're in school and now you're going to daddy's house. And then, you know, is mommy coming tomorrow? I don't know. They asked me that today. Uh, like, you know, are, are we going to be with mommy Saturday? I don't know. Like, I don't say that, but I, but in my mind, I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, it depends on if she has plans with her boyfriend or not. Obviously, I'm not going to say that to my kids, but I, you know, it's just, ex it's exhausting for them. Our two-year-old can't sleep at her house unless he's sleeping with his older brother because he's not used to it. There was times when our eight-year-old and six-year-old went on a camping trip with her grandpa and she gave me our two-year-old on days when I normally wouldn't have him <laughs> because he can't sleep at her house. He's used to sleeping at our house. At, that was during, that, at, during the separation, correct? Yes. Yeah. So today you're asking the court to allow you to be the primary parent yes. and be in control of the children, right? Yes and to let her have a reasonable visitation yeah something around every other weekend or something of that nature yes and quite frankly that's about all she's been doing correct according to your testimony well i mean it's off and on i mean it, it's not consistent uh the weekends are saturday specifically have been the day the day where she usually passes them off to me and when she does pass them off to you does she tell you what she's doing well i asked her she was supposed to go somewhere tomorrow and she asked if i could take the kids and that's the first time I ask, because every time I try to delve into her life at all, she just gets mad at me, or she sends me a threatening text or something. But uh, the first time I did ask was about tomorrow, and I was like, well, where are you going tomorrow? And she's like, that's none of your business. And so I was, but I, I'm like, okay, I'll take the kids. Like, Are you asking to have no contact with Mr. Wilden? Absolutely. Wilden? You asking for mom to take a drug test? Yes. Do you think there's more to it than just what well, she's testified to? I don't know. I mean, Leah's always, up until recently, always been very truthful, but I know that she's lied a lot about stuff. She wasn't even honest, you know, with our lawyer about the affair until pretty pretty far in. And when she did admit to it, it was like, oh, I slept with one guy, I went this guy once, and it was after we were separated, and that's not true at all. So if she's admitting to taking, you know, mushrooms once, how do I know that's the truth? So you're asking for mom not to be able to drink alcohol or use illegal narcotics while on her visitations? I think that's a pretty simple thing to do around kids is not to drink alcohol. I mean, if you, unless you're an alcoholic, you cannot drink alcohol when you're with the kids. She's already agreed to the possession of the marital residence. Um, I also don't want our kids coming home smelling like cigarettes anymore. Her, explain that to the court. Well, there's been plenty of times when <laughs> I saw ashes on the side of her door and I, the first thing I smelled is smoke. And I asked, like, Leah, have you been smoking? No. Well, I was like, do you let your boyfriend smoke in the car? She said, yes. Well, I was like, well, do you, do you think you could not let him do that? We got a two-year-old, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. Our two-year-old sleep with his little blankie every night that he's attached to. He won't, won't sleep without it. Every, there have been numerous times when I, they come to my house, I have to wash the blanket because it smells like cigarettes. And obviously, that's not preferable. 
the Leah that I knew, if, she, if we let our kids go somewhere, like with her dad or something like that, her dad doesn't smoke, but if they came home smelling like cigarettes, that would have been it. You know, no more time with, with grandpa. But her boyfriend takes priority over even them. Has, has she been a smoker? No, not that I know of. She just, are you <laughs> saying she just started that? After well, I don't think she's smoking, but I don't, at the same time, I don't know. I also didn't think she was taking any kind of illegal drugs either. Uh, but now, as far as the marital residence goes, you, you've asked for the exclusive possession. And do uh, you feel like she's got everything out of the house that she will need as far as there's personal the, items? Or she there's, I, the only thing I know of that she wants is a dresser. Um, and, you know, if she wants to come take that, that's fine because it was a gift to her. Um, I prefer her not to bring her boyfriend with her to take it, though, because I don't want him at, a, at the house. Okay. And you talked to me about changing the locks, correct? I did. Yeah. Whenever she sent me that threatening voice memo, she also sent me other threatening texts. Um, you know, and you did change the locks. I did change the locks, and I sent her a text, and I said, hey, I changed the locks. If you need to come by and get anything, I will gladly let you in. You just need to let me know. And that's when she came with the cops. And that was based on my advice to you, correct? Yes. Are you asking that Mr. Wild did not have any contact with the business as well? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that should be as big of a sacrifice as what Lee is making it out to be if he's only working there one day a week. Are, are you concerned about them trying to do away with this business and start his business? Absolutely, especially if she, I mean, he's, he has a competing business not far away. She's posting on Facebook recommending his business on Moms of Hendersonville. Our business is located in Hendersonville, and she's recommending kids cuts for him. How does that help our business? Are you asking for her to maybe to give you some sort of accounting or something like that? Absolutely. Um, There's on, on our credit card, you can see, you know, she, she used our credit card, our business credit card to buy her boyfriend a banner. There's a bunch of other purchases on there that may or may not be legitimate, but I don't know. There's a lot of Amazon purchases on there. I don't have access. Is there actually a pleading that's on the docket for today about these issues that you're now talking about? There is. I had filed also a motion to reconsider the restraining order. Shouldn't that be heard by Judge uh, who issued it? And I also filed a, uh, well, I don't know that she's not coming back until the end of the year. And quite frankly, the restraining order is is gone. As far as the, the meat of the restraining order, the, the money's already been returned. But my, my question, question would be- is that you're asking for him what all he wants, and he's talking about now banning this gentleman from the business and so forth. And I don't know that there's a pleading down in, in any of these motions. You have a motion, uh, the mandatory injunction and temporary restraining order to appear as show cause, a motion to adopt a parenting plan, a motion for exclusive possession of the marital residence, a motion to reconsider the temporary restraining order, and a motion to set temporary parenting plan. Nothing in that indicates to me uh, anything regarding the business. Judge, there is. Um, let me put it up here. I had filed a motion, it's entitled Motion for Ex Parte Restraining Order. The meat of the, uh, the motion talks about a restraining order and then asks for it to be signed on an ex parte basis. And Judge Lockett Mass declined to issue that restraining order. On an ex parte basis, but the motion for the restraining order is still there. And I asked for it to be heard, you know, with the immediate consideration. But my understanding from these, the way they're done, the ex parte part, she declined to sign it. I wasn't given notice of the filing of the restraining order uh, by Mrs. Valdez. When I got in, and we had talked on the phone, uh, Ms. Tease and I had talked on the phone, she knew well that I represented her, and I didn't get a notice of that as it went into the court. I got a notice of it as it came out signed. And then I filed these things. You know, I questioned if, you know, Judge Locker Mash didn't get the other side of the story, if she would have looked at my pleadings, if she would have even signed the restraining order. I'm, I'm simply trying to identify what we're hearing today. Um, and it's, if you're saying that your motion for ex parte restraining order is uh, set for today, I don't have it on the docket, but it is a part of the file. I just didn't see a notice of hearing on it. Well, if, if you look at the notice of hearing, what I did say was um, is expected to be introduced and filed with the court clerk for immediate consideration, this motion. and. 
you know, the motion calls for a restraining order. And then it also asks for this to be heard on next parte level and to sign something, which got denied. But there's also the motion for the, and the body talks about, you know, the father by through his counsel requests a restraining order prohibiting the removal of the party's minor children, namely the three children, you know, by the petitioner. It talks about a restraining order. And that's what I'm asking for. And I think that's appropriate. And it also talks about the business and the things of that nature. But that's what I'm asking for uh, not to travel under today as far as him not having any access to the business. Steve, you've been standing. What do you have to say? Yes, Judge. Um, this motion was specifically for an ex parte restraining order and it was denied. So I don't believe Mr. Holly can go forward on a motion that has already been denied. Well, like I said, it's it's an ex parte, and then there's also the motion for the restraining order. It's all in one. My understanding was that if it got denied as ex parte, we could still argue that. Well, your your motion for ex parte restraining order was denied. Then, if there is something in the body of it, um, then that that requests some sort of a hearing on a restraining order, then you would be required to give notice. So I'm simply saying that I'm not going to uh, address the issue of restraining him other people from being involved in the business because it was not a proper notice to Ms. T's on that particular issue but all of the motions that are properly noticed will have the hearing on that so. may I address the court well I don't know if you looked at the the la I would I would just say the last part of that motion the husband has requested that a restraining order be issued this is the prayer section that a restraining order be it not ex parte the husband is requesting that a restraining order be issued prohibiting the mother from removing the minor children from his care and custody pending a hearing on this matter and further prohibiting the mother from allowing access to the party's business, namely <coughs> Gibbles and Glam in any manner whatsoever. So we did address the business in there. We're talking about the, the mother. That, that, that was going to be heard today. Well, uh, again, the, the notice, and it was only because everybody's filing restraining orders. Uh, we're filing restraining orders I didn't have notice of. I know it's going to be signed and set. So I prepared all of this to be sent in. Meanwhile, this got signed and got sent to me, you know, in the process of, of filing all this stuff. But my notice did say the motion uh, for ex parte restraining order, which is what I've entitled this motion I just read from, is expected to be introduced and filed with the clerk, with the court clerk for immediate consideration. And that was well within the time frame. And it was immediately considered by Judge Lockhart Mash and it was immediately denied. That's all I'm pointing out is that there was no additional motion. Notice rather that the motion was going to then be presented in court today and that Ms. Tease would have had notice of. So I'm simply ruling that it's not that particular portion of your motion, your ex your motion for ex parte restraining order is not um, per se on uh, the docket. You have motion to reconsider the temporary restraining order and all of the other motions that are properly noticed. You may continue with your questioning of your client before we take a recess. That's all I had, Judge. Thank you. All right, well, this will be an appropriate time for cross-examination for us to take her after the recess. So we'll stand in recess for 15 minutes. All rise. Court's now in recess for 15 minutes. Well, I mean, I know for a fact that the, the salon wasn't open until 1.30, a few days uh, over the last couple of weeks, maybe more. And I would say that's lost profits. Now, have you yourself communicated to employees of Giggles and Glams telling them the situation that's going on? After they left. So they, I had some reach out to me after they had left to let me know what was going on. Um, but I had no communication as far as enticing or trying to tell anyone what was going on before they left. You also stated earlier that, uh, let's see, you felt threatened by the post made by Christopher Draper that you saw on the screen over there. Isn't it true that your name was not mentioned anywhere in that post? You yeah, it's true that mentioned. my name's not mentioned on the post. Okay. And isn't it true that the reason your wife came to collect the guns from your house was to recoup on the money that you took out of the account so she could pay her money? I have no idea. She could have came there to disarm me. She could have came there to give the guns to her boyfriend. But didn't she call you boyfriend. beforehand and tell you that she was coming to get them? She was coming to get the guns, but I don't know what she's taking them for. She didn't tell you the reason. Taking guns. 
That's all she said. I mean, I would assume that it's one of three things. She's going to recoup the cost, which I don't know how you take someone else's guns as a register to them, and then you go and sell them. Um, but it could have been that. It could, but for all I know, with Leah's behavior lately, whatever she tells me, it could be the complete opposite. I mean, she could be giving guns to her boyfriend. She could be just keeping them so I don't have guns for some reason. But in this case, you know that not to be true because she told you that she was coming to get the guns to recoup on the money you took from her. <clears throat> I would assume so. I mean, that's what she said. Okay. I think, if, if I remember correctly. All right. And did your wife uh, ever consume wine while you guys were living together? Yeah. And that wasn't a concern for you the whole time you were married? No. I mean, I never saw her get drunk. I don't drink, but I didn't have a problem with her drinking wine. She never consumed beer while we were married. So now, uh, that, now that you don't live together, you have a problem with it? I have a problem with her taking drugs. And then also with her behavior lately t tells me that she is not practicing self-discipline. So I don't want her drinking when the kids are there. But during the course of your marriage, have you ever known her to be a to be an alcohol abuser or a drug user? No, not yet at you, all. Yet, that, and that's what's so concerning. Yet you want her to be court ordered to take a hair follicle test when she has no history of drug abuse? I mean, she literally just said she took drugs. Why would I not want her to take a drug test? And that's the one that she admitted to anyway. I don't know if there's others. Do you think a one-time incident and drug abuse are the same thing, sir? Yeah, I do. Do you have any idea how to pay the employees of Giggles and Glam? Not currently. And so is it normal for you to make such a large withdrawal from the business account? Um, we don't think we've ever taken 10,000. Again, the, the, the goal was like 5,000. We've definitely taken 5,000 from the business. We've taken up to, I think, seven or 8,000 a month from the business. Um, like I said, it's not normal for me not to take money from the business for months at a time. Uh, every month I withdrew money from the, from the, uh, uh, our business. Uh, and like Leah said, she would let me know the profits. I withdrew the money and we would, we shared all of our bank accounts. So we would put them in bank accounts, but from June profits until now, I hadn't taken anything. Okay. And so what did you do with the 10,000? You just were leaving in your 5,000. I put it back, right. uh, immediately and 5,000 I was holding. And did your wife voice to you that she wouldn't be able to pay both of your employees if you don't put it back? Uh, yeah, and I actually voiced to her, let me know, give me, give me something besides these credit card statements that I see of you just using, you know, our business as your personal piggy bank. Give me something so that way I can help because this is a 50-50 business. Even if she has been operating it, it's still a 50-50 business. Didn't she in fact tell you that she'd be happy to provide you with an accounting? And she never did. She just filed. All right. Um, have the chil since your wife moved out of the marital residence, have your children been harmed in any way physically? No. Okay. Nothing um, I know of anyway. Since uh, since she's moved out, I mean, we've seen one <coughs> video of your child crying. Does your child cry every single night? No, it doesn't cry every single night. Um, I think it's pretty common knowledge that divorce causes trauma to children, even if they're not crying every night. Right. So you're saying that. This is not unique for children to be upset about a divorce. No, it's not unique. I think that this divorce is unique. I don't think it's normal. I wouldn't say it's normal to be having an affair with a felon um, and the father to be concerned about that. But your child was not crying about the affair with the felon, right? They were just yeah. crying that you guys are getting divorced. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, Judge, I have nothing further. What? <clears throat> Let me ask you this question. Let's take... Uh... So what willing wielding out of the scenario you said she was the primary caregiver and she was a pretty good mother during the time you and she were married take yeah. mr wielding out of the situation what concerns do you have about her being able to take care of the children <clears throat> um that is the majority of the concern i mean uh the the behavior change is also concerning but i do think most of that comes with her con her connection with mr wilden um like I said, Leah's whole personality, everything about her has changed in the last month and a half. Um, you know, How old are you? I'm 34. And are you the same person you were when you were 18? 
I'm not, but I'm, it's, it's a drastic change in such a short amount of time. Well, trust me, when you get to be my age, that you're not the same person you were when you were your age right now, that life is full of changes. And sometimes people stay the course and they continue on in the same situation, even though they may change. Other times they change because something becomes more important than others. Yeah, I, th I think that's happened. I think that her relationship with Mr. Weldon has become more important than other things. All right. Anything further? Well, you said... Um, Ms. Tease talked to you about the children not being harmed. Is it fair to say they not harmed? There's not been any neglect? Because they've spent in the last, <coughs> since the separation, the majority of the time with you. Yeah. I mean, this has not been 50-50 since the time of the separation, has it? No. I mean, you heard her say 65-35. What percentage would you put on there as far as you having the kids and now her being a mother? I would say on a conservative side, maybe 75 on my end. Uh, but probably closer to 80, uh, 85. And again, you all had talked about 50-50, correct? Yeah. And when you say 75 to 85% with you, uh, was that by any, any great declaration that you made? No, uh, it was because I didn't, at the time, up until now, I didn't have the power to keep the kids away from her. Any time that I was given extra with them is because she gave them to me. Your concern with your children now, I think you testified, was her using drugs and drinking. Correct? Yeah, in her relationship with uh, Mr. Wilden. <clears throat> and I think you testified your Youngest or your middle child can't sleep? Which child couldn't sleep? A two-year-old can't sleep at her house by himself anyway. He can sleep with his older brother, which he doesn't do. Uh, he's never done before, but uh, that's what Lee has communicated to me. Okay. And you said you'd lived in your house now how many years? Like two and a half okay. years, something like that. So this is the only house he knows? Oh, yeah. He's two years old. Uh, so, yeah, this is the house he's, he's known. And again, you're asking the court pending the final hearing to be the primary parent to kind of maintain the status quo now? Absolutely. Nothing further. Uh, just a couple, Your Honor. Uh, would you say that it's normal behavior for a child to take a little bit to adjust when they move into a new residence? Is that reasonable? Yeah, I think that mixed with the compounded on top of se separation of parents and never being in school before is a lot to, for a little child. And would you say that it's understandable that the kids might have spent more time with you in the last couple weeks because my client was <clears throat> moving into a new residence and working yeah but I, that's not the reason why she did it she did it because she you know she's going on trips or she had to work or but you don't actually know that that's just what you're speculating well she did uh there, i know for a fact on one saturday she went on an all-day trip with her boyfriend um and then uh, obviously this last saturday she was on an, a weekend trip with him um but that accounts yeah. for very minimal days out of the last 33. Is that accurate? To my knowledge. I mean, most of the time she wouldn't tell me what she was doing. Nothing further. Thank you, sir. You may stand down. <coughs> Holly, you may call your next witness. That's our proof, Judge. You have rebuttal proof to offer? No, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'll hear you in argument. Your Honor, um, this case is a case of come to the podium please sure. it'll make it a little easier for me to hear you this case is just a divorce case of bruised egos it has nothing to do with my parent being a bad mother or a neglectful mother in fact she's raised these kids for eight years you know almost by herself um as far as giggles and clams goes you know we've heard proof today that she made an erroneous expenditure from the business account the amount of a hundred dollars your honor um, that is just not enough in from counsel's perspective to take ownership of a business or the responsibilities of a business away from somebody when she has stated that she'll gladly put those funds back in um mr valdez deliberately took ten thousand dollars out of the account requiring my client to go get a loan from a family member just to pay her employees. And so it's clear that Mr. Valdez does not know what he's doing. 
as a as far as this business goes and so that's why we're asking for the restraining order to be kept in place she will happily account for all business expenditures and show proof uh, but she's been running it by herself since august of 2022 and to change things now might be catastrophic for the business um, as far as a parenting plan goes like I've said, uh, you know, 50 50 is more than reasonable. We want to maximize the children's time with both parents and not alienate them from either parent. Um, my client will not do certain things that she's testified to any longer, um, and she'll make sure of that. Um, but as far as the wine on a Monday night, you know, she's she's not the only client that I have that does that, that still has full custody Seriously? of their kids. You have other clients that drink wine? <laughs> I do. I do. But, Your Honor, we believe 50 50 to be more than fair. Um, we're not trying to alienate Mr. Valdez from his kids. We just <clears> want my client to be entitled to her time with her kids as well. Um, if, you know, if Mr. Draper was put in a lineup, these kids wouldn't even be able to tell Your Honor who he is. So I don't think that Mr. Draper is the reason this court needs to hang its hat on not giving my client her fair share of custody. That's all. Holly? Well, I have a little different view from the testimony that I heard, Judge. What Ms. Valdez testified to was it was a fairly religious husband, wife, children, and, you know, nice house, white picket fence type relationship. Mrs. Valdez has then taken that, and in a simple divorce action, you have issues with your spouse, you move out, you go get a motel room, maybe you get an apartment, you work toward your best interests of the children, and you do it that way. Mrs. Valdez moved out, as you heard testimony, left, went immediately and used marital funds to spend the night with her boyfriend and consummated that relationship on that night, rather proud of it. Then, over her somewhat testimony of being scared to death of Mr. Valdez and not knowing how to how to handle that goes back, stays with him for a week, um, and and then enrolls the kids, you know, in a, in a school. Again, all preparing for this divorce. Mr. Valdez is trying to save his marriage at this point and trying to do anything possible for his wife and his children. Then Mrs. Valdez, you know, admits today what's been going on is they drink five, six nights out of the week, two or three drinks a night. She's got a convicted fellow. Uh, someone who's had a serious addiction problem, having those kind of drinks while her children are spending the night. She's testified that she's, and it goes directly to her credibility, using mushrooms, a psychedelic drug, experimenting with that with Mr. Wilder, Wilder while he bought it and brought it into the home. She goes out and spends close to $4,000 for him to have a motorcycle. She goes out and spends $3,500 for a photo shoot. She don't know what the purpose of that really was. And this is a photo shoot that was on the internet for everyone to see. Mr. Valdez has some valid concerns about her parenting abilities when he says other people can see this. Other people can tell other children, this is your mother. This court's well aware that, and you've heard enough cases where kids understand all of that, and all of a sudden, it's a problem for that child. She's going through some sort of crisis that doesn't involve her children, because she's left these children. Uncontroverted testimony of Mr. Valdez, he, he said 26 of 33 days with him. That's what's going on. You've heard him testify, you know, it's been a 50-50 split for the most part anyway. And his, his entire life is spent with his marriage and his children. That's just not the case with Mrs. Valdez right now. That's a drastic turn. That's a 90-degree, 90, 90 180-degree change as to, as to how she functions. And I think there's something going on here. Either she's having some serious issues herself. Maybe she likes bad boys. I don't know. But she's got other things on her mind. 
than these children. I, I urge you to remember back to that tape where she came into the house. Mr. Valdez saw it and he testified. She didn't, she didn't spend two seconds with her daughter. Walked off in search of guns. I mean, that was her reason. Her daughter's trying to hug her and she walks off. She's just got something else, something else on her mind rather than these kids. They're not the paramount decisions um, that, that she's going to be making in their best interest. Mr. Valdez, I think from his testimony today, there shouldn't be any question that he's rock solid with these children. These children deserve to be with somebody rock solid after what's been happening to them throughout this process. And the fact that she even thought it would be somewhat okay to have him sleeping in the same house with these children while they're conducting this type of activity. And I mean, alcohol and drinking every night and Lord knows what else. I mean, she admitted to the, to the mushrooms, but again, we really request a drug test so we can get down to the bottom of, of what's going on. Mr. Valdez will pay for it. It's like everything else with the motorcycle and the photo shoot and all the other monies that have been going out by Mrs. Valdez, it's still marital money, but I mean, he's willing to pay for it. And he'll take one, no problem at all. I think we've kind of agreed to the motion for exclusive possession of the marital residence. Um, and we are asking for that. As far as the $10,000 goes, it wasn't about taking the $10,000 to go spend it to live on, to take it away from her. As he testified, it's about spend this on your boyfriend and your midlife crisis or whatever you're going through. Don't be spending it on motorcycles for your boyfriend. Don't be spending it on photo shoots for your boyfriend. I'll say it. And don't be spending it on things that, that have absolutely um, no bearing on the children or anything else that you have been working for this entire time. Again, I think Mr. Valdez is a rock solid choice for these children. I think your honor has seen that today. We're asking for her to have a reasonable visitation. Um, the $10,000, we're asking for an accounting, uh, maybe a monthly accounting of what that's used for. Obviously, she's gotten the five back. She's gotten the other five back. We followed the order and got it returned. we just like to have some sort of accounting of what's going on. I think he is owed that. It wasn't about keeping the money from her. It's about how you're going to spend it. And if we could have some sort of accounting, we never got that and never got an, an agreement on that. You heard today that you know, I wouldn't even hear there's no agreement on anything. We didn't have any sort of agreement to even get a, a, an accounting. And I've asked for for this situation. But um, Mr. Valdez is begging you to let him be the primary parent over these children. Let her have some visitation with obviously no contact with um, her boyfriend and you know, let's get through this divorce. Let's get to a final hearing and see what you want to do or see how she improves herself during that period of time. Because, um, I submit to the court, I don't think today with her testimony, especially the boyfriends have been very impressive on being able to take care of children, small children. Thank you, Judge, for your time. <clears throat> a couple of observations and one is sometimes people who come, especially, and this is based upon my own experience and my own background, as well as my observation of people throughout my career as a lawyer and now as a judge. It is sometimes surprising to one party of a, of a marriage that the other party doesn't want to be married to them anymore and that they've changed. Well, the problem is that people change and what might have been important to this young lady at one point in her time may not be important to her at any point. It happens with people who are raised in a very religious background. Um, as the old country expression is, is that they sometimes want to kick the traces. That has to do with a, a mule pulling a plow. But in any event, sometimes people want to kick the traces and get out of the, the regimen of their life and go on with it. So I don't have any problem with the fact that she wants to deviate from the closely held religious beliefs that that Mr. Valdez may think that she's required to have or that would be appropriate for. I don't have a problem with that. My only concern is about the decision process that is being made. And I'll address that in a moment. In deciding who is going to be the primary residential parent, I'm required to look at the factors that are set forth even on a temporary basis under 366-106 of the Tennessee Code. <clears throat> Those factors include the strength, nature, and stability of the child's relationship with each parent, including whether one parent has performed the majority of parenting responsibilities relating to the daily needs of the child. 
clearly the testimony of both of these parties was that Ms. Valdez was the, during their time they lived together, that she was the primary residential parent for these children, that she was the person who fulfilled most of those things. He was also involved, but she was the primary person who provided for that. Number two, that each parent's caregiver's uh, past and potential for future performance or parenting responsibilities, including the willingness and ability of each of the parents and caregivers to facilitate and encourage a close, continuing parent-child relationship between the child and both of the child's parents, consistent with the best interest of the child. <clears throat> it does not appear to me that uh, under the circumstances that either of them necessarily has failed to provide or fulfill their parenting responsibility. But I have a real problem with someone who calls up, even when you found out that he had the $10,000 removed, calling up and threatening to make sure he never sees his children again is one of the things that is anathema to this court regarding children. You don't threaten another parent with never being able to see their child again in order to gain an advantage in a lawsuit. It just simply is not appropriate. It's not done. <clears throat> That causes the court to find that, that that factor favors Mr. Valdez simply because um, when you threaten to keep him from ever being able to see his children again, it does not indicate you're going to facilitate a close relationship between him and the children. I don't have any, number three is refusal to attend a parenting class. I don't have that evidence before me because this is temporary. The disposition of each parent to provide the child with food, clothing, care, education, other necessary care. Um, they both have apparently been doing that. There's not been any real exchange of, of uh, money between them, but I think she was waiting to try to get herself set up. The degree to which each parent has been the primary caregiver is defined by the parent who's taken the greater responsibility of performing their parental responsibilities. Clearly, as I've said, she was the primary caregiver during the marriage when she left and left the home for that period of time. Mr. Valdez, who had been involved <clears throat> uh, previously as well, but not to the extent she was, he's assumed a greater responsibility for performing those parental responsibilities under the current status that we're in. The love, affection, emotional ties between the existing between each parent and the child, I think they both love their children and I don't have any question about that. Um, the emotional needs and developmental level of the child I don't have anything to indicate that any of these children, they're very, one of them is a two-year-old and none of them are very old. I think there's an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a two-year-old perhaps, um, but they're young children. Number eight, the moral, physical, mental, and emotional fitness of each parent as it relates to their ability to parent the child. <clears throat> as I said, I don't fault you for deciding, you know, that you lived in a closely, um, a very confining religious background in the past and one that envisioned that you were going to be the wife that uh, took care of everything and did everything. I don't have a problem with the idea that you no longer want to do that. In today's society, unlike the Jewish society that existed at the time of the scriptures being written, women were in a different class. They're not there anymore. We're in a different world. So for that reason, I don't have a problem with it. My problem was this, some of the decisions that you've made. For example, <clears throat> if you think your children don't know or won't figure out that you're having Mr. Uh, Wilding to be at your house overnight, you're just kidding yourself. Kids, as they grow older, are going to figure that out. Second thing is, is that, it, that uh, your decision to use mushrooms, uh, shrooms, or whatever you want to call them, something that is patently illegal as an experimental situation, is a regrettable decision on your part. More importantly, it is, it is a criminal act. And uh, although certainly we're not gonna refer this for criminal prosecution, there's no reason to do that. It clearly shows that there's some either maturity lacking on your part or <clears throat> a uh, moral problem that prevents you from being able to recognize how wrong that really is when you're supposed to be parenting uh, three young children. Um, and I don't care whether they're legal or not legal in the city of Denver, Colorado, or anywhere else in the world. I think we're looking, we're looking at the laws of the state of Tennessee. <clears throat> the um, child's interaction and interrelationship with siblings and other relatives and step relatives and mentors is, uh, don't have anything about that. The importance of continuity in the child's life, the length of time the child has lived in a stable, satisfactory environment, don't show that there's really... Um, I think the children have been 
used to having both parents and now they're suddenly in the middle of it. This is a temporary situation, so I don't really think that that applies. Number 11, evidence of physical or emotional abuse to the child or children. I don't find any evidence of that. Number 12, the character and behavior of any other person who resides in or frequents the home of a parent and such person's interaction with the child. I'm all for someone who has turned their life around. I see it every day. I'll be seeing it the next two days when I have our hearing in criminal court regarding violations of probation. I credit anyone who uh, goes through a process to try to straighten out their life. Um, my idea of sobriety is not someone who goes through sobriety after having a lifetime of criminal activity and then suddenly decides they're sober and that, but yet drinks three or four times a week or four or five times a week and three or four times a beer. None, no rehabilitation program, no um, sobriety program that I'm aware of ever condones the use of alcohol. Uh, it's just substituting one drug for another. And uh, so for that reason, I think that it's uh, obvious that, that Mr. Wilding has not really embraced the sobriety that he has testified to, and that in fact, he's not an individual who is particularly embracing his sobriety to the extent that makes him an appropriate person to be around the children. His criminal history, there's no violence or anything in it. They're all drug related. But the fact that he has a history of drug related convictions and is now using mushrooms and stated rather cavalierly that he was prepared to use them again if that situation uh, presented itself indicates to the court that he is a person who has not fully embraced the idea that he could go back to prison for possession of, mes of mushrooms and has testified under oath in a proceeding that he did in fact do that. If he was on probation, he'd be looking at going back to prison immediately on a violation of probation. So <clears throat> that is a factor that clearly concerns the court. Don't have anything else uh, about the employment schedule. I think both of them can make advantages to, of the schedule. They can make it work. <clears throat> Any other factor deemed relevant by the court? Um, so what we have here is, is a situation where two people are just now going through court. I don't care whether you have this boudoir photograph made. Uh, I do think that it does create some issues you might want to think about as far as publishing those on the internet. Uh, but as far as, as this court is concerned, that's your life. You can do with it what you want. Um, he can't control you anymore to do those things. If that's what you want to do, then you have at it. I'm just simply saying that you've got to consider your children from that perspective as well. And maybe years before that ever comes <coughs> to their knowledge, but nothing that I saw on, the, on that demonstration that was given was anything that that would be so severe that uh, would traumatize the children, but perhaps I'm different than the children. Possession of the marital residence will be to granted on a temporary basis exclusively to Mr. Valdez. Operation and control of the business uh, will be granted to uh, Mrs. Valdez because she is the person primarily responsible for running the business. I think he's had very limited uh, control or, or whatever. As far as me setting aside Judge Lockhart Mash's order, I am not prepared to do that. I don't think it is appropriate for me to go behind her restraining order. And, and he has returned the 5,000, the extra 5,000. However, <clears throat> she will be held accountable for the operation of the business and he will be entitled to uh, have access through his attorney to any financial records that might be during the discovery process to determine how she's operating the business. I'm gonna say some things that you're not gonna like and, and you just need to understand and certainly Mr. Uh, Welding is not gonna like them. He doesn't have any business being around these children, right? So he is prohibited from having contact with your children, from being spending the night in your home when these children are present, period, exclamation point. Once you're divorced, that's a different matter but right now you're in the middle of a divorce. And so for that reason, I'm limiting and prohibiting that contact. I've given you the reasons why I feel that that's not <clears throat> appropriate. But in addition to that, he'll have no interaction or no uh, input or, or any involvement in the operation of this business. It's a jointly owned business between you and Mr. Valdez. You're gonna operate it, you do it. 
He can give you advice if he wants to, but he's not going to be involved in it, period. You understand that? Then, <clears throat> lastly, um, I'm going to order that you not make any more loans to Mr. Valdez. You don't give him any more funds. Every dollar that you have, theoretically, and every debt that you incur are considered, as long as you're married, to be marital debts and marital funds. So you cannot, I'm just prohibiting you from giving away to him or anyone else marital funds. So you're not, I'm, I'm basically saying you've got to use that money for your children and for yourself and for the business, but you can't give it away for anything else. And that includes incurring another debt to, to give money to anything else. <clears throat> so um, that, in my opinion, is takes care of the business. So it really comes down to who's going to be the primary residential parent. Based upon this court's uh, observation and determination, I find that Mr. Uh, Valdez should be the temporary primary residential parent. Uh, that is really just a jurisdictional designation. Um, at this point, I'm going to set an equal residential schedule. I have prohibited, I asked him the question about your parenting, about what kept, you know, what concerns he had about it. And, and Mr. Welding is the only concern he had. Otherwise, he thought you were a good mother, the person you used to be. Well, we're going to establish a track record for you. You're going to have the children. We're going to just alternate weeks. Now, the two of you can agree on anything else, but you alternate weeks in between. Uh, you can exchange on Fridays, and, and if you all make up a different arrangement, so be it. But I intend for you to have, both have equal time. Why am I doing that? Because your children are my concern. They're missing their mother. They're with their father. You're going to each have an opportunity to, to establish a track record on how you deal with these children and how you deal with each other. Trust me when I tell you that if you come back in front of me and I hear another recording of you threatening him and cursing and so forth, you're, you're likely to lose the, the equal residential schedule and go to something much more restricted. I don't want to do that because your children want to be with you. But I'm giving you the opportunity to do that, giving you the opportunity. If you want to be with him, that's your choice. Mr. Wilding, Wilding, but you can do it when the children are not present. And then I've given you the other restrictions. As far as when the children are with you, there will be no consumption of alcohol in your house, period. And I, it's not that I'm opposed to it. I think the Bible is full of, of examples of, of alcohol being in, involved in it. That's my personal belief. May not square with everybody else's, but I believe there's no prohibition. What is pro prohibited are the extremes gluttony, uh, alcoholism, being given a strong drink. Those things are what the Bible says you shouldn't do. Not that I'm preaching, but since your background is such, I think that's what you need to think about. So I'm not restraining her from consuming alcohol. I'm just simply saying don't do it with the kids around on a temporary basis. Uh, once we get through this divorce, if you decide you want to do it, then you may have to do it with some restraint. But having every night of the week, you know, two or three drinks is not a moderate consumption of alcohol. When you get to be my age, you look at these articles about how bad it is for you to have that frequency of an of a alcoholic drink, and it can, uh, can carry a long-standing effect. Um, I am not going to order a drug <clears throat> test at this point because she has admitted from the stand that she has used the mushrooms. That was a part of the basis that I gave for it, uh, for my ruling. But Obviously, it goes without saying you're prohibited from consuming any sort of illegal narcotics, drugs, uh, herbs, or anything else that might be considered to be illegal. Um, child support will be calculated between the two of them. Parties will exchange the information regarding their respective incomes and calculate the days at 50-50 right now, and then go from that. Uh, Mr. Valdez, I, I question you about what you thought of her because she's never going to be the woman that she thought you married anymore. She's no longer going to be that person. That's not, doesn't make her a bad person. It just means she's going to be independent. She's not going to listen to you, but there will be no arguing, no fussing, no fighting between the two of you while, the, you know, regarding these children or about these children. I don't want to see any emails that are hateful and full of, of uh, anger. I want to see kindness between the two of you. Everybody understand that? All right. Is there anything I have not addressed? I judge. Yes. Well, the <clears throat> first the parenting plan goes, um, am I right in suggesting 
my parenting plan needs to be amended for equal time and then it's adopted or because we always get in the holidays i just think we just need to, i don't care whose parenting plan is used it doesn't matter he's the primary residential parent on a temporary basis there will be an equal <coughs> residential schedule alternating weeks unless the parties otherwise agree and they obviously have been agreeing to some time swapping out holidays will be alternated we have the next holiday coming up as I'm told, uh, Halloween, my clerk says I'm not supposed to hold court on Halloween, but if they have Halloween, do it together. Goodness gracious, you've got kids that want to go trick-or-treating, set aside your grievances, and, and the two of you take them trick-or-treating together, or share the day, half with you, half with her, whatever, I don't care. Thanksgiving will be the next one. We'll divide it. Uh, the children have been primarily with him. She'll have Thanksgiving Day, and, and Friday he'll have Saturday and Sunday. Christmas, it'll just be reversed. He'll have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, until two o'clock, and she'll have two o'clock Christmas Day until December the 26th at 6 p.m. I don't know how much simpler it can be than that. So. That's fine, Joe. Just always get those questions. And then decision-making authority. Decision-making will be, Mr. Uh, there'll be joint decision-making, but in parties cannot agree, and I want to encourage your discussion and your ability to communicate with each other. If you can't agree on a temporary basis, then the primary residential parent will have the final say in those four decisions. But he can't just make a unilateral decision regarding your children. He has to talk to you first. And if he does that, that violates this court's order and that will be considered in the final hearing as well. Obviously, I want to see that both of you have time with your children and set a track record to see how, to, how well you two communicate. Anything else? I can put in there, this is all subject to change if they agree to it. So put, put in there, I think what you were saying is this parenting plan can be changed by agreement of the parties. Yeah, as long as the parties agree. I'm gonna, with the relationships the two of you have had in the past and with <clears throat> my experience, if you're going to make a change, I don't care how minor it is, do it in writing in the form of an email where you both agree something so that there's a record showing that you agreed because otherwise one of you will come into court saying you agreed the other one says you did all right i have a raft of cases yet to get to mr holly thank you, thank you.